Hi folks, welcome to Right Outside with Big Bow Outdoors TV. I'm your host Matt Propelka. As you can tell from my Optifade open country camo pattern, we're going to be doing a western hunt today. I was fortunate enough to accompany the guys from Bucks and Bows Archery Shop as they headed out west to central Colorado on a DIY archery elk hunt. After we take a look at that hunt, we're going to sit down with BBO Pro Staff Chef Matt Clemens. He's going to give us a venison pot roast recipe that will absolutely make your mouth water. I'd encourage you to get your pens and pencils out and jot this down because I can personally attest this is a fantastic recipe. So without any further ado, let's get on the road to Colorado. A DIY hunt can be as simple or as complicated as you want to make it. We had a group of guys that were going to drive cross country and a couple other fellows that were going to fly in and meet us. So the upside is we had plenty of guys to share the driving responsibility. The downside is we had a whole lot of gear to take along with us. Fortunately we were able to take two trucks as well as a large trailer full of gear which also served as kind of a staging area once we got there. And so uh, as you'll see here in the footage coming up, it was a pretty interesting ride cross country uh, and when we finally got there, the ride itself got even more interesting. Getting after it. At one point during the slippery ride up the hill, I looked out the side view mirror and realized that our trailer was starting to get a little bit sideways. That was bad because there wasn't a lot of room on the unimproved road. If the trailer was getting sideways, that meant it was about to go down the hill. So I looked over at our driver, the fearless Andy Keppel, and told him to not look out the mirrors and just hammer it. Hammer it he did, and Andy successfully got us to base camp. Okay. After arriving in base camp, we got things set up and immediately went out and tried to take in some sights and do a little bit of scouting. Elk hunting in the Rocky Mountains is a tremendously physical undertaking. A lot of time, energy, and preparation has to go into making sure that not only are your legs ready, to climb steep cliffs and clamor after a huge elk who can cover a lot more ground than you can on foot, but you also have to be ready to deal with the altitude. In this case, our base camp was at about 8,500 feet above sea level, and most of our hunting took place between 9,000 and 10,000 feet above sea level. That was a challenge for somebody coming from the east coast. So I employed the Wilderness Athlete Altitude Supplement, and I can personally attest that it really did the job for me. You start about five days in advance to heading out on your hunt, and if you use the altitude supplement religiously, you'll find you will have greatly reduced, and in my case, zero symptoms from being at altitude. After a couple of unsuccessful days, Chuck White and I finally got on a bull that appeared to be a little bit hot to try. So after running across a field, putting my foot into a pothole, dropping the camera, burying myself waist deep in mud, and finally catching up with the intrepid Chuck White, I was able to hunker down in a nestle of bushes, try and get the camera pointed in the right direction, and begin cow calling for Chuck.
This bull was heading right across Chuck's field of vision. He had gotten the draw and was standing at full draw 25 yards away from the majestic animal. Unfortunately, the bull never presented him with a broadside shot. Taking a quartering toward shot on a Colorado elk or quite frankly any other big game animal is generally a bad idea. I applaud Chuck's restraint as he let this elk move along and he finally got wind of me and decided he was going to be a little more secure higher up on the mountain. As Chuck let his bow down, we both hightailed it up the hill. Unfortunately, this bull had decided he had better things to do and already had a herd of cows that he was going to be dodging around trying to chase off the dominant bull. We never saw him again, but we heard him bugling, maybe laughing at us a little bit off in the distance as the sun set on that day. This is Chuck White from Bucks and Bows Archery. Whether you're a beginning archer or a seasoned veteran, we can meet all your archery needs. Bucks and Bows Archery is a Matthews Bowtech Elite Archery and PSE dealer. Bucks and Bows is a full service archery pro shop. Whether you're looking for that new bow customized to your exact specifications or simply need fine tuning of existing equipment, we have the technicians and pro staff to get the job done. I'd like to personally invite you to stop by and check out our wide selection of bows. We hope to see you soon. All they ever talk about is that boat. The boat, the boat, the boat. We're going to put the boat in the water. We're going to take the boat out of the water. Hey, when are you going to come with us on the boat? It's a big deal, this boat. To me, it is a complete waste of time. It makes me nervous. Some people want more out of life, and we ensure the things that make more possible. Safeco Insurance. Call Andy Keppel with Keppel Insurance for your free insurance review today. ABC Glass & Mirror is your full-service commercial and residential glass specialist. Whether you need custom shower enclosures, same-day screen or thermopane repair, a new tabletop, or a commercial storefront, call the experts with over 30 years of experience. ABC Glass & Mirror is fully insured. They're located on Route 8 just off the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Stop by and visit our friendly staff today. Over the past 25 years, the Three Rivers Chapter of the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation has worked to raise over $3 million to help conserve habitat and fund research for an American treasure, the wild elk. Come celebrate our 25th anniversary with an evening of good friends, fine dining, and an exciting auction. Your participation can help the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation leave a healthy and thriving elk herd for future generations. Well, that was a terrific trip. I want to say thanks to the guys at Bucks and Bows Archery for allowing me to come along and I look forward to accompanying you in future years. Hopefully we'll have a great elk episode for you in an upcoming season. You never know. Until then, we're going to have to make do with a little Pennsylvania white-tailed deer. BBO Pro Staff Chef Matt Clemens does a terrific job of taking an animal that a lot of folks might turn their noses up and turning it into one of the best pot roasts I've ever had. Hi, today we're going to make a Pennsylvania whitetail pot roast. Now I have this gorgeous pot roast that Matt harvested here locally and I've marinated it overnight in a really dry red wine. Uh, I used a Chilean wine this time, but anything dry that you have laying around will really do as long as you can drink it. As long as you would drink it, then I'd say go ahead and marinate with it. But 
For this dish, I like it to be dry. Uh, that and uh, oh, three or four whole cloves of garlic that uh, I minced up really fine, and some whole sticks of uh, fresh thyme. And uh, I just crushed those, I threw all that into this storage bag, and it's been marinating now for about 24 hours. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drain this off, drain this wine and marinate off, and let this sit for a minute. I'm gonna reserve a little bit of this marinade because we're gonna use it later when we make our braising liquid. So the method for cooking this is, is marinate, sear, and then braise. And, that, and that's what we're gonna do. Last night, we marinated it. Today, we're gonna to sear and braise it. And the reason we're gonna sear it is uh, it's gonna develop layers of flavor in the pan that later we're gonna deglaze with some good old fashioned ketchup, some local honey, and some bourbon. So. Get your favorite honey bear and a bottle of bourbon and let's make some pot roast. Okay, so we've let this pot roast drain for a little bit to drain the excess marinade off. Now we're gonna season it. Now this step is really important. It's, it, between this and the searing, the, the, those are the two most important steps of the whole process. So you can see it's kind of purple now. That's because it's been marinating in red wine overnight. But it's important that you season this pretty heavily and that you, uh, Season it pretty evenly. So I'm gonna hit it with some salt first, all over. I cut this into some more manageable pieces so that I can sear it evenly in the pan that we're gonna cook it in, that we're gonna braise it in, and I'll get more, it'll have more surface area to be seared, which is just gonna, that seared flavor, that caramelization is really important to this dish and it's going to uh, add more of that caramelization to it. All right, so I've salted it. Now I'm gonna pepper it, and just salt and pepper is all you're using on this, but I like to use a blend, a medley of different peppercorns. I think it adds uh, just a whole new level of, of flavor. And same as the salt, you're gonna be really generous. This is actually quite a big piece of meat. There, that's pretty good. Now we're gonna set this aside and get to work on the vegetables. Once the vegetables are done, this whole thing is gonna flow pretty quickly. The next step that we're gonna do now is get all the vegetables ready so that we have everything ready so that when we're standing over the stove, we're just adding stuff in. And for vegetables, our pot roast is gonna have the standard mirepoix, which is carrots, celery, and onion. Uh, we're also gonna have some uh, mushroom. And then uh, to serve with our pot roast, I'm gonna take these red skin uh, potatoes and make some smashed red skin potatoes. So for the carrots, for all these vegetables, you want them to be consistent, roughly the same size, so they'll cook at the same time. And when you're braising something, these are gonna be in, these are gonna be in the liquid braising for a long time. So the cuts that I'd make are gonna be bigger than say for a salad or a side dish or something like that. They're gonna be a little bit bigger so that as they braise, they don't just melt away into nothing. So I'll show you here while I fling carrot peels all over Matt's kitchen, how I want, how I want these vegetables to look and the size that I want them to be. So I'll, give, I'll just show you an example of each one. For the carrots, I'm gonna cut them all on an angle like this so that they get a nice, long, flat surface area. Let me use my other knife, it's a little nicer. I'm gonna cut these all on a bias like this, so I get these flat, but long, and uh, I'd say a little bit more than an eighth inch thick pieces. And it's okay that they're pretty big, because they're gonna cook down quite a bit. Okay, we're ready to start the whole process to get our pot roast braising. First thing we're gonna do is sear this meat. So we're gonna, if you remember, we're gonna sear the meat and then remove it. We're gonna sear the mushrooms and remove them. Then we're gonna throw all the vegetables in together, add our liquid to make our braising liquid, and then our, our pot roast. So I have a fair amount. I've almost covered the entire bottom of this pan. This is my uh, favorite pan for this. That's why it's so beaten up. So I'm gonna take these, lay them in here. 
gonna get a little smoky. But I wanna lay them down so that they have real good contact with the base of the pan. And what I'm gonna do is sear these in batches. So I'm gonna give this a couple minutes on this side, then I'm gonna flip it and sear the other side. If I have to lean them up or whatever, I wanna make sure that the whole thing is seared, and then I'll set them aside. Okay, I'm about to pull this first batch out, and we're just gonna let them rest here while I sear the rest of these. You can see that these have developed some nice color on them. They're not burnt or anything, but they have a nice sear, a nice brown, shiny color to them. This is all just about adding layers and layers of flavor to our pot roast. Now we're gonna add the mushrooms in. And I do these separately and first so that they have plenty of room in the pan because I wanna get a real nice sear on these mushrooms. The best way to do that is start with a real hot pan with a little bit of oil. I poured some of the extra oil that we had off with a little bit of oil. Get them in there, give them a nice stir, and then spread them out so they're nice and even across the pan. Push them down so they get some good contact. We're gonna season them. A little bit of salt, some of our pepper blend. Also gonna throw some of this fresh thyme in there because mushrooms really like thyme. I just strip it off, rub it down so that it gets nice and it releases all that oil. It smells really good in here. So let those alone for a little bit. Give some contact. You can see they're shrinking up already. Now the hard gave them another stir. Now the hard part is to just leave them alone for a couple minutes. Let's see, carry the one. Huh. Well, looking at the numbers, looks like switching your car insurance to Donegal is going to save you some money. How much? Do you like the looks of that number over there? Yes. Well, switching to Donegal could save you up to four or five of them. Up to four or five? Hey, numbers don't lie. Donegal, let our numbers talk to you. Call Keppel Insurance today to find out if you qualify to save hundreds on your auto insurance. Keppel Insurance, 412-264-8072. For the past 15 years, Blue Mountain Environmental Management Corporation has been dedicated to reducing environmental impact, preventing workplace injuries, and limiting our clients' liabilities. Our staff of environmental scientists, engineers, and technical specialists are committed to providing innovative safety solutions, comprehensive environmental consulting services, and source testing to keep your business compliant with ever-changing regulations. Blue Mountain Environmental, the leader in environmental services. If you own a small or medium-sized business and don't have a succession plan in place, contact attorney Russell G. Roll. I like to look at the whole picture first and you know see what their business is all about and then we move through the process one step at a time developing a plan and implementing it, documenting it. My role in your business is to act as your trusted advisor and your advocate and act as your quarterback in every step of the way. This is Chuck White for Bucks and Bows Archery. Whether you're a beginning archer or a seasoned veteran, we can meet all your archery needs. Bucks and Bows Archery is a Matthews Bowtech Elite Archery and PSE dealer. Bucks and Bows is a full service archery pro shop. Whether you're looking for that new bow customized to your exact specifications or simply need fine tuning of existing equipment, we have the technicians and pro staff to get the job done. I'd like to personally invite you to stop by and check out our wide selection of bows. We hope to see you soon. Okay, these have some nice color on them and they're ready. I'm going to pull these off now. I'm going to start with my other vegetables. Got my mushrooms out of there. I think I'm good. I'm going to add my other veggies in. My mirepoix, my carrots, celery, and onions. Once again, I season these guys. Salt. A little bit of pepper. A 
I'm cooking these in a nice hot pan because I want to retain that heat in there. Get these guys sweating. And then I'll start deglazing. So since I'm using a really high heat, now I want to keep these moving. I'm not stir frying them, but it's kind of the same idea. I don't want them to sit still too long. You can see they're starting to get shiny now. They're starting to sweat. We're almost ready to move on to the next step. Now I'm stuck getting ready to add the other ingredients to this pan. You can see I'm starting to get some color on my vegetables. They're nice and shiny now. So they have a nice sweat going. These aromatic vegetables are releasing all the all that flavor that's inside them. It smells really good in here right now. So, time to start building. I'm gonna throw those garlic cloves in. I'm gonna throw the mushrooms back in. Now this is where it gets a little bit crazy. Over on the side here, I'm gonna throw some ketchup in, probably about three or four tablespoons. I'm going to let that ketchup cook in here a little bit. There's a lot of vinegar in ketchup and it's going to give the roast almost the same effect as uh, a sour broth. It's definitely not the same thing, but it reminds me of that. Now I'm ready to add the bourbon and flame that off. I want to make sure the pan's nice and hot. And I'm going to use all of this. It's about a cup, a little bit more than a cup of bourbon that I have here. So I have a cup of bourbon in there. Let that start to bubble a little bit. And then, ooh, and I'm going to flame it and let it burn off. And again, just adding another layer of flavor, another complexity to the whole thing. Almost done here. Okay, next we're going to add our beef stock. Oh, beef stock is going to make up probably the biggest portion of this braising liquid. That's good. Now I just need this to come up to a nice heavy simmer or a low boil. I'm going to taste it. I'm going to check it for seasoning, see if it needs anything. Then I'm going to add my meat in and put it in the oven. Okay, I'm going to say goodbye to these guys for about four hours. We're going to put them in a 325 degree oven for about four hours. But I, what I want you to do, because every roast is different and every oven is different, is I want you to check it in about an hour and see if you need to feel you need to turn it up or turn it down. It should be at a real low simmer in the oven. Okay, now we're getting ready to plate this up. This is the part I've been waiting for. It smells delicious. This has been braising in the oven now for about four hours and uh, we're ready to put it on a plate with some mashed potatoes and see what it tastes like. So let's take a look. Okay, to plate this up, it couldn't be any simpler. We're gonna put some mashed potatoes on the plate and then our pot roast. I'm gonna put these just a little off center. Love mashed potatoes. So we're gonna make a nice big pile of them. We're going to put, well, let's see here, one big or two little. Let's do these two little pieces right here. Lay them right in there next to it, like that. Need one more spoon. get some of these vegetables, these mushrooms and carrots, celery and onions. Put that right across the top. Right. I'm just letting some of the liquid that it braised in run down over those mashed potatoes. Could make a proper gravy with this, but I really love to just use the braising liquid. It does it all right there. Now the famous gremolata. 
sprinkle some of that over the top. Looks pretty on the plate and has a nice spark of freshness to the dish. And hey, we have this leftover time. Might as well just knock it right out of the park and get fancy. Bang! There you go. We have Pennsylvania Whitetail Hot Rod.